Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Mitch Menchaca, the director of the City of Phoenix Office of Arts and Culture, and we're excited to have you with us as we continue our professional development series for artists. Uh, we had Bill Dambrova with us uh, in the fall as he did some uh, quick uh, learning moments for artists in this uh, realm, and we're glad that he can come back and do some deep dives with the group. Uh, Katie, before I start, I don't see that the little recording thing is happening. Are we? Oh, there it is. There it is. Sorry. Just want to make sure because this is going to be great information. All right. So I have the in the pleasure of introducing Bill Dambrova. He's a native Arizonan and an Arizona State University graduate with a BA in studio art. His love of art, artifacts, and biology led to a career as an exhibition designer specializing in natural history museums, zoos, and aquariums. Bill has shown artwork in local as well as national galleries and museums, and has created site-specific works at locations nationwide. Bill is moving into new territory as a public art artist. He has completed the fabrication phase of a brightly colored 6,000 square foot terrazzo floor he designed based on his paintings for the newly built Sky Harbor rental car return train station in Phoenix, Arizona. It is scheduled to open to the public in 2022 after the trains have had time to run for one year with empty passengers. And I have had the pleasure of touring the space and it's stunning. As a museum exhibition designer, his clients include the Aquarium at the Pacific, the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, J. Paul Getty Center, the Los Angeles Zoo, Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, Navajo mm -hmm. Nation Museum, New York Botanical Gardens, the San Diego Natural Mu History Museum, wow. and the Smithsonian <laughs> National Zoological Park. Uh, is quite the, the list. He is currently working as a designer on a large scale project about the deep sea for the Monterey Aquarium, scheduled to open in 2022. Currently has an exhibition of new large scale paintings up at the Ice House, and we'll have a solo exhibition of large scale paintings at the Mesa Contemporary Art Museum in 2023. So without further ado, Bill Dambrova. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna jump right in and start sharing the screen. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, everybody. Let's share right there. Can you all see that? Cool. I'm going to keep it really informal and just go ahead and leave the PowerPoint up as I kind of talk about this. It's only, you know, five slides. Um, so welcome to the SketchUp tutorials for public artists. Um, this image here is one of the very first public art like, I guess it is public art uh, structures that I designed while working at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. Um, one of the reasons SketchUp is so great is that you can just like design it on the fly in 3D while you're um, having the while you're thinking about it. So rather than draw it in pencil and then try to transfer it to a CAD program, you can actually mold things in in the 3D space. In this case, um, it's also important sometimes to just get a, a like a virtual view of what it is that you're building before you actually build the whole thing. Um, and I have to show you this image because I don't have the SketchUp file anymore, but what it is is a lenticular and um, I had drawn the southern coast of uh, where Long Beach is now before, uh, you know, we ended up uh, populating it and then after uh, we populated it. So we wanted to have you be able to see what it looked like before and after um, in a kind of low tech way in a marine environment. So um, I cut out each of the um, little strips from the photo from the image that I did, that I drew and stuck it right on the model on each side of the uh, accordion-like um, lenticular. So I could walk, I could virtually walk to one side and see that you could see the whole image and then virtually walk to the other side and see that you could see the new map um, of, you know, uh, civilization, <laughs> so-called civilization. Um, so that's a really great uh, kind of um, example of how you can show the client also ahead of time, like exactly what this thing is gonna look like and it's gonna come out really close to the to the model that you designed. Um, in the previous workshop, I showed you how to set up the SketchUp workspace. So I'm not gonna get super into that this time. I'm just gonna go right in and start showing you how to use each of the buttons and stuff and what they do. Uh, I turned an Illustrator line drawing into an AutoCAD drawing and then imported it into SketchUp to create a 3D object, but this time we're just going to create 3D objects from scratch. Um, and then we placed the 3D objects in uh, exact GPS coordinates. So you could take your public art piece and put it right on a Google map and see how the sun uh, affects it and where the shade goes. 
So this time I'm going to uh, just kind of show the basics of drawing, um, how I do it. I learned SketchUp a long time ago. Um, before there was internet tutorials, I had to learn it from a book. So I have a lot of uh, probably strange habits, but I come at it as an artist, not a designer necessarily. So I think my habits are kind of uh, good for artists to see. So you don't have to watch the tutorials and, and have to think like a designer. You can think like an artist. Um, uh, you can use SketchUp to uh, basically, like I said, sketch the ideas as you're having them in front of you know people with a your screen projected onto the onto the wall or whatever it's kind of a nice way to design something in a committee kind of situation because it's so fast and then i'll also show you how to add materials and textures and styles so for instance this uh, was something i designed for new york botanical gardens and in the sketchup model itself it can look really cartoony and um, i wanted it to be more sketchy because when clients look at your drawings and your cad drawings they get kind of caught up in the details like is it really going to be that exact brown color is it going to have where are the lights and all that kind of stuff so sometimes it's nice to have a sketchier version of your drawing so that people know that it's still in the kind of working work in progress uh, phase and it also gives a kind of a nice look uh gave kind of a rustic feel to this uh medicine house structure. Um, this, I always like to say, because even though I've been using uh, SketchUp for a long time, I forget how to do stuff if I haven't used it in a while. Like Doug asked if I would do the projecting onto a curved surface and I'd probably have to go do a refresher for that. But I did, I do plan on showing how to do that in the next workshop. Um, but a lot of times I just go directly to this guy, Justin's page, type in what I wanna learn. And he's really good at explaining difficult subjects really easily. Um, just another reminder, I'm using a Mac. So if I say I'm using the command key on the Mac, it's actually the control key on Windows a lot of times. Another thing I like to say is just like, as you're playing with SketchUp, just try to every once in a while, just press the option key and press a mouse button and see what happens. Cause there's a lot of shortcuts that they don't really talk about that, um, that just kind of intuitively might work for you. Um, I'm using SketchUp Pro 2020. There is a free web version, but uh, my friend that I was showing how to use SketchUp said that a lot of the stuff that I'm showing him isn't available on the free version. And I think now SketchUp is a um, subscription-based program, so you pay monthly, and I think you can turn it on and off as you need it, which is really nice. Um, this is the mouse I'm using. You don't have to use this exact mouse, and again, there's other ways to... Um, uh, use shortcuts, but my rolly ball is also a button. And so when I'm in the 3D space and I press down on this button, I can orbit around the object. So I can, I can press and hold my mouse and then drag my mouse around and, and orbit around something, which I'll show you in a second. Um, if there's anything to remember from any of the SketchUp workshops, it's to group everything that you design as you're designing it because they'll stick together and you can't, if you design something and you want to be able to um, delete a part of something you've designed or something like that, and you click the whole thing, it'll select the whole thing that you that you drew. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. And then click, drag, click means a lot of the um, ways to use tools is you click the mouse button, hold down the mouse, drag your mouse, and then click again to release the action that you did. Okay, so I'm going to get right into SketchUp now. Um, to show the basics of drawing, I know we're uh, public artists here, but to show the basics of how to just draw rectangles and things like that, um, this is something that I do a lot of times. Um, if I have a show somewhere, this was at the Torrance Art Museum, um, I'll have them send me the floor plan and then I'll just extrude the walls to scale. And then I'll put my, um, my paintings in there to see how I think it's going to look and it helps me to uh, create the exhibition. So I'll show you how to do that uh, with the floor plan that uh, I got from Mesa Contemporary Art Museum. So now I just open SketchUp to open a, a new file for the first time. You can go to File, New or New from Template. I just like to go New so I can just like decide how what my workspace is going to look like. They always put a little person in there. It's nice because, you know, if you don't want to sketch to scale, like by plugging in, like this is two feet by two feet, you can just start sketching 
based on the size of the person. Like, I know this is maybe going to be about eight feet or something. And this is the orbiting I was talking about. So like pushing down on my mouse button and, um, the orbit tool, which is also right, right here comes on. So if you don't have a mouse, and I guess a lot of the stuff you could probably do without a mouse, maybe it might be hard, but you would just click on the orbit button and then you can press down on the regular, uh, left mouse, uh, button to orbit around. But this lets you just look under things, around things, as if you were holding a sculpture in your hand, which is really nice. Um, out here. So, uh, toolbars and stuff, I set it to be a large toolbar so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, I'll try to remember to zoom in to show you which buttons I'm using. Um, but you can make all this stuff really small so that you can focus mostly on your screen. Um, let's see, why is that not coming up? There we go. Uh, a lot of stuff that you need, you can find in your under window, uh, materials, styles, styles means the, uh, what your workspace looks like. This right now is the most, the simple, basic workspace. It has a sky and stuff and a horizon line. So you can see where you're at. Um, and then you can go in here and, um, click through pre-made sketchy versions of things. That's the exact one that I was showing earlier. And you can draw in this, uh, this style if you wanted to, <laughs> like, like you could actually just, you know, really sketch things and it looks sketchy as you're drawing it. It's not easy. <laughs> um, but there is, there are, uh, default styles and I like to work in a white space, just a plain white space. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, bring in the floor plan that I'll, like all I did was take a photo with my phone. If you really want to be um, super precise, you can scan it. This is the what I'm going to bring in. Um, you can scan the image and uh, drop it in and, you know, it'll be perfectly flat. One thing you need to do is have SketchUp. You need to be in SketchUp to grab an image from outside of SketchUp and pop it in if you're not in SketchUp. If you're, if you're not clicked on the window and you try to drag something in, it won't drag in. Um, you can also uh, import things, but with a Mac, at least I know you could just drag images directly in to the, to the program. And then, um, this is where it gets interesting because it comes in, not exactly to scale, but I want to figure out how to scale it. So I'll grab my, uh, my pencil line tool. And it's going to draw uh, straight lines. Another thing, again, like I did this setup in my um, last workshop with these buttons here, show you the uh, different um, viewpoints in your uh, model. So if I want to look directly down flat on this thing, there's a, um, you know, a top view plan view button and I'll hit that. And then also go to camera and then parallel projection, which takes the force perspective off of it. So now I know this is as flat as I can get. Kind of look around and make sure I'm on the, the origin plane here. And then um, I'll just draw a 33 foot line. Uh, make sure and look up here as I'm drawing this length, I'm gonna type something in. So I'm gonna hit click once, release the button and then drag. And then I'm gonna type in and also if you see my line turn green, that means it's on the green axis. So it's going to be perfectly straight up and down. It goes red, green, and then blue is uh, the X, Y. So I'm going to just kind of go further than I think it is and type in 33 feet and then hit return. I was pretty close there. Um, and I'm going to adjust the size of this drawing or this uh, image to meet this line. So 33 feet is approximately right here. And I've had really good luck doing this where I've been able to get uh, really accurate to scale drawings from it. So this button is the scale button. It puts the bounding boxes around your drawing, just like in Photoshop or any other program where you can uh, scale things. And you can just, if you don't hold any buttons down, it'll uniform scale it. So I'm gonna scale down, or I mean, I'm gonna scale up, <laughs> excuse me. And then go to the this up and down arrow button is the move button. 
when it's selected, I can move this thing around. I purposefully kind of made this at a weird angle so that you could see what I was doing. So I'm going to call that pretty close. The thing is with this, it doesn't have every wall dimension. So that's why I had to bring it in like this rather than just look at the drawing and type in the dimensions. There's no dimension here. There's no wall here. So in this case, it's just easier to, um, to just trace over it. So you can, um, either draw a rectangle with uh, your line tool, or you can grab a rectangle and then type in, like, I don't know what this dimension is. So I'm just going to guess. And then again, it's a click release the mouse button. It's a, that's a left mouse click release the mouse button and then drag it out to where, um, you think it is. And if you look up there, my dimensions box here, um, you're going to get the dimensions and I'm, you know, I'd like to type in, uh, seven foot 11. And I don't know what this dimension is, but a lot of times walls are about five inches thick. So I'm going to type in, um, seven foot. 11 inches and it just, I hit return before I hit the five inches, but it's close enough. <laughs> just, uh, that was, must've been habit or something. So to get this wall to become five inches, you can just like hover over the line. It'll automatically, uh, snap to the end point. And then I want to make sure that it's an orthogonal line. That's 90 degree, 90 uh, degrees, and then type in five inches. Which doesn't really look like very much. The other one must've been more like 10. And then if I know this number, I know it's 33 feet. So I can type in 33 feet and it's going to be directly across. And what happened after I uh, closed the, the box there is that we've got this filled in rectangle that I can now hover over with, with what is called the uh, push pull tool, which extrudes rectangle. So now I'm orbiting. I'm still in that weird, uh, parallel projection. So when I want more of a forced perspective, that feels more like a real, uh, like a real space, I can hover. And then you can see that these little dots show up. And then again, like click, and then I've let go of the mouse completely. I can, uh, raise this up. And then if you look at my dimension box up here, you can see the, the sizes. I can either intuitively just raise it up to however much I want, or I can type in, uh, 18 feet and it'll go to 18 feet. And that looks really crazy high. So I'm just going to drop it down, uh, five feet and you can go up and down with any side you want. Um, if you can, if the loop is closed, I guess I'll call it when everything is uh, closed in here, you can hover over different planes of things and, um, and extrude them. And if you, you know, want, you can just extrude out and I can either type in the dimension or it, this is an interesting thing. I can hover to where the, I can hover over to where I put that line and it should go directly to should go directly to that line. Well, I don't know where it went. I can show you again later, but now we've got one of our walls. And basically what I'm doing is what we used to do in the old days, which was to build foam core models of everything and then cut out tiny little, uh, to scale drawings of the, or to scale photos of uh, the artwork and plop it into place. So I'm going to complete the, the floor plan here by clicking again, clicking at this endpoint. You can also find the midpoints, like by hovering, I know this is going to be the exact center of my wall when it says midpoint, but I want to go from the ground here to 39 feet. It's not perfect, but, uh, you know, the dimensions at least are perfect. And then, um, five inches again, and then rather than have to draw the next two lines, I'll just grab my rectangle, start there. And then click to that point, create a new rectangle. And then this is what I was talking about. Like if I want to make this wall, the same height as this other wall, and I don't know what its dimensions are. Um, I hover over the part I want to make the same height and then come over. I'm holding the mouse button down. I'm holding the left mouse button down and I come over here and hover over the top of the next wall and it'll put it directly 
exactly to the height of the next wall. Okay, and then this is a, I'll just probably keep showing you this, but like now that I've designed these two things and they're touching, um, they are now connect, they're, they're glued. So if I try to grab it and move it around, these two walls are now merged together. Um, I can get, unmerge them by uh, hovering and push, push pulling and dropping it back down to where it was. You can always use Command Z to get back. If you just you know want to go back a few steps, that means uh, undo. Um, but what I want to do is, um, oops, make sure that uh, I want to keep this wall and this wall separate, just for the sake of showing you guys. So to select this whole wall without selecting this, they're touching. So <laughs> it's going to select the whole thing when I do this, but do it. You can do a click to select one side of a of a of a wall or an object you can do a double click to select the side of the wall and the edges of the wall and you can do a triple click to click everything that's touching so see i'm glued i'm stuck to this i'm glued here so sometimes when i even when i have a really complex model and i've done this and i forgot to group this which is remember group everything i'll have to come in here and manually unattach this by holding down the shift key and then clicking with the left mouse click, I'm going to unclick that, I'm going to unclick that, unclick, unclick. And when I know this is not blue anymore, I can, I can group this. And the shortcut for grouping is command on a Mac, command G to group it. So now I can triple click this and hit command G and it's its own group. So now I can grab this wall. And I should be able to move it away from this other object without it sticking, without it getting glued together. Sometimes you want things to be glued together, merged together, so they're all one object. And sometimes you don't. But I just like to group things together as I'm going. Um, so uh, if I want to go back and just work on this one section of wall, I can, I can triple click on it and I can edit in that one group. So. Um, now for the sake of just like, I'm not gonna go to perfectly dimension this. Let's say we're just sketching this out, grab the rectangle tool, hover over the wall and just start drawing. And I'm, I'm using my rolly ball to zoom in and out. And then I'm using the little button of the rolly ball to, um, to move around. So I don't have to keep going back to buttons to do it. I don't need this wall, it's not in my space. This is where, you know, we don't know what this angle is, but I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it by looking down directly flat on it by going into parallel projection, which now you can see that this is perfectly straight down on it. This is almost like a CAD drawing, a plan view CAD drawing. And then perspective lets you see it kind of as you would see it with your eyes, binocular. So I can still, even at this weird angle, I can still hold this line out there and type in 19 foot six inches and it goes out there like that. Um, and this is a strange angle. I, I want this line to be parallel and it's not always easy. So there's different ways you can try to make this line parallel. Sorry. <laughs> This happens often when I'm do when I'm presenting where I end up underneath a wall or something like that. Um, remember, I, I should have grouped this. So I'm going to group that. I did group it already. Yes, I did. So I grouped that already and I want I want to make this line close to parallel, but I can't just can't always just make if that makes sense, a 90 degree, because it wants to go to the orthogonal uh, directions. So I'm just going to, because this is a sketch, just uh, click on the line to select it and then use this move tool, hover over the line that I want to move, hold down the option key, which is going to copy this line, and then hold down the left mouse key and then drag, and I can, I can drag it. What ends up showing up as, I don't know if you can see that, but my line just turned like a, a magenta color. So I know that as I'm dragging, I'm dragging it perpendicular. 
So it's, I know that I'm dragging it uh, so it's evenly parallel. And I'm looking up at it says nine, nine inches, nine inches, eight, one eighth. Just going to let go. So you can see that there. And then, you know, the box didn't close yet. I've got to still close my box by uh, drawing these lines here to close it so that I can extrude this as a wall. Let's see if I can show you this too. Um, sometimes if you start at an endpoint, you can find, you know, you're going to be, um, perpendicular again when your line turns magenta so it's like a you know i want this to be even i don't want it to look like this where you've got this like extra little angle in your wall so i kind of i click at the end point and then drag and go i know i'm on the face of that wall on the edge there and then i can click click again complete and now i'm able to complete another rectangle to make another wall and then i'm going to extrude that up and then hover where uh, the top of the wall is. Another interesting thing is it's gonna remember how high this wall is. I can just, um, where is it? The, use the push pull and then hover over this section and then double click. And it's gonna bring it up to the exact height of the last wall that I did. Double click, double click. So you don't have to sit there and hover over everything. And so, um, you know, I want this to look white. So I triple click that go to my materials, which is where all the um, different colors and things are. Uh, you could, there's asphalt and concrete already plugged in. I'll show you also how you can um, add textures and stuff, your own textures or from the internet, like exact Sherwin-Williams colors, that kind of thing. And I'm just gonna go to colors right now and then look for white, wherever white is. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Uh, and then you get the paint bucket, which looks like the paint bucket from Photoshop or anything else. And then if I've got this all selected, I should be able to click on it and turn it white or magenta or any color I'd like. Um, earlier, I went onto the internet to look for a specific South uh, Sherwin Williams color and found this obstinate orange. Um, ooh, it's opening in Illustrator. Sorry about that. Um, found this obstinate orange color. And again, it's your screen's gonna vary the color. Um, there are ways to try to get an exact uh, RGB number, but a lot of times for just uh, showing the client um, how I think the space could look, I'll just, I'll find a clean color swatch that's perfectly, that's square, and I can import it really easily into my colors into my uh, the model I'm working on by going to colors and model. This is really important. It's just gonna show all the colors that are already in there. And then, um, where is it? I need to click on SketchUp to be in it. This color swatch here, I can just drag it from my desktop right into the colors, call it orange, O, S, W, whatever the number is, and then say, okay. And now I've got obstinate orange in my model and I can click on it and then I can make, you know, all my walls, this weird orange color. And then if I just select all, sometimes it lets you select everything and color it all orange. Sometimes you have to go in individually and click every side. It just, uh, I'm not really sure why it does that. I think it depends on how complicated your model gets. So now I know that this is how my, the space is gonna feel for my show. And I want to see, you know, how many paintings I want. And it's like a lot of times I'll just have my paintings already, you know, small scaled down small, so I can drop them in easily into the space. And I know what the dimensions are, so um, I'll go in directly into my model and just start drawing rectangles to the size that I know they are. So I know that uh, this one is nine feet. And then hit return, go again. This is going to be 15 feet, hit return. And then um, again, you can either uh, type in 15 feet or you can extend past. And then make sure you're drawing on, you know, if, you're, if your line lights up, you know you're drawing on an orthogonal direction. And then 
you have that extra line hanging out over there, you can take your eraser, looks like an eraser, and you can just erase that line. Should be able to erase that line. <laughs> They'll know what's going on. Huh. Or you can click it and delete it. But you should be able to erase things like that. I don't know what's up with that. See, I just, I'm not sure why I did that. Anyway, if you have an extra line hanging out and you want to get rid of it, um, make sure the little circle is the, is hanging over the part you want to erase, and then you can just erase it. You can erase parts of things. Whatever I end up touching with the little circle gets erased. Um, when I'm putting a painting into a space, I like to um, make it into a 3D object by just like uh, extruding it out two inches. And then so it, so I can move the whole thing. Remember, I have to if I try to move it <laughs> without grouping it, it's going to do something crazy like that. So I triple click a group, and then I'm just going to bring a painting in by dragging it in. And then once I'm in uh, the workspace, kind of, if I haven't clicked anything yet, I can put it on any surface. I'm going to try to make sure it connects to the bottom edge. And then um, I can go to the endpoint. And I just made up those numbers. So if, if it's not to proportion, I'll show you again. Dropping it in. Um, oops. Um, if you hold the, the shift key down as you're dragging it, then you can do, you can um, scale it however you want. Sometimes I just do this just because it's only there for reference, just to remember that it's there. If I, if, if I know that the rectangle that I drew is correct size, but the image that I have maybe isn't, I'll just hold down the shift key and then, um, you know, fit it to the size of the rectangle like that. And then oftentimes, just like it did, it disappeared into the rectangle. <laughs> So I will grab my uh, direction move copy tool, and um, I want to pull it. I want to pull my image out of the rectangle. It does this all the time. I don't know of any other ways to, to get it to just stay on the face. But I'll um, hover over an edge, and then draw a line, so that I know that I'm pulling my image directly perpendicular to the wall. By my image is selected, the image that I just dropped in is selected. Um, and now I'm going to use the move tool over here, though, and click, and then I can drag out in a straight line, and then I can type in, you know, it only needs to come out like 0.5 inches, maybe more, 0.5 inches to be on the outside of that, and then I will, this is my, my image is selected, and now I'm going to hold the shift key down to select a second image. And then I'm going to group them both so that now my painting is movable. And here's something that happens often. It's not really happening, but I'm pretending it's happening. You you try to move your painting off the wall and it doesn't come off. Do a left click. And then there's a little, there's a selection here that says unglue. A lot of times when you bring an image in and stick it directly on the wall and you try to get it off the wall, it won't come off the wall and you're like, what's going on? You have to go left click on the selection, select the object that you're working on and then go unglue. See if I can make it happen this. So it happens sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Hey Bill, would you yep. like to take a pause and answer some questions? We have some coming Absolutely. in. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, I had, wasn't paying attention to time. <laughs> that's okay. Um, I didn't want to interrupt you as you were working. Um, so I've got a question from Doug and Doug, you might need to unmute yourself to explain um, something about in their functions. Is there a magic wand tool like in Photoshop? Yeah, Doug, can you elaborate? All right, we'll come back to Doug. Do I have to unmute him? No. No, he should be able to be unmuted. He maybe he stepped away for a minute. Um, no. no. Hey, now we can hear you. Okay. Um, Bill, yeah, just go over various tool tips and is there um, different ways of selecting objects and is there a magic wand tool 
similar to Photoshop? No, there's not. So magic wand tool is like a selection tool where you can um, do like a, a loop or like draw a, a line around. Sometimes, you know, you can either the magic wand, you can either like hover over and click and it'll select a certain thing, or you can use the lasso tool and, and select things. But um, pretty much the, the best ways to um, select objects is to either hover and then click triple click if you want to click on an object, or you can just use the um, arrow tool and then click outside somewhere and then create a uh, it's, it's always going to be a rectangular selection uh, shape. So if you have a bunch of objects, and they're all over the place, and say you um, they're close together, and you only want to select this. <laughs> but you end up hovering over here, you're gonna start selecting stuff in the background too, because whatever your whatever this box is that you create, anything in your view is gonna be selected. So you kind of have to figure out how to isolate the things you wanna select. So like I'm trying to select just this, but then I end up also capturing these lines in the background. So I, will orbit around the object if I can and try to figure out how to get in there to select just that object. And like, even this is pretty hard to do. If I happen to capture this edge, I'll just go back in and hold the shift key down and unselect it. But that's why that's another reason to group everything. So if I would have grouped this and then group this and then group that, and then you hover over, It's just going to select that group and you know that that group is selected because it's in a box now and I haven't selected any other parts of this because since it's a group, I would have to select the whole thing. All is right. That Thanks. Yeah, that does it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I kind of didn't go like button one by one because I figured I would start hitting on them as I was drawing. Um, but yeah, if you guys have questions about certain ways of drawing, I can just go run through the buttons also really quick now that I've kind of showed you how to use the workspace. Um, just a yes. quick question. Am I making sense? <laughs> are you is are you able to follow along with what I've done so far? Am I going at an okay pace, Katie? I, yeah, you're making sense to me, and I'm getting yeses in the chat boxes. So okay, because yes. yeah, again, this is all intuitive to me, and um, explaining as I go. I'm trying to explain as many buttons as I'm hitting and stuff as I'm going. Um, yep. Nope, you're doing great. Any other um, questions? Yeah, so there was a question um, about where to find the first workshop. So if you are looking for any of Bill's previous software workshops, those are all available on our YouTube page, and I plugged that into the chat box for everybody. I also emailed it out this morning. If you are looking for last week's workshop with Sarah Con Conley Odenkirk, that will be available on our YouTube um, tomorrow. I just haven't gotten it uploaded yet, but it will be there tomorrow. And then today's workshop will be there next week. Um, next question we have is um, from Cheryl. If an artist had an installation of say 200 small elements on a wall, would this be a good program to configure and send to a museum or gallery or commission entity for installation? Yeah, um, now more and more um, institutions have SketchUp or you can import SketchUp into their 3D model or into their CAD uh, drawing or into their CAD program, excuse me. But yeah, if this wall had like a million little circles all over the place and I'm not gonna draw all million of them, even if you drew them intuitively, just like I did, it's still to scale if you're, if the rest of your space is to scale. So a lot of times I can check dimensions by using the, um, just the pencil tool. And I can say, I know this is a certain height from the floor. That's four foot, you know, four foot and one sixteenth inch from the floor. There's also ways to dimension it directly in SketchUp. Um, there's a dimension tool here. This is what most dimension tools look like in, uh, uh, CAD programs as well. And so you can dimension it yourself. I don't know why that didn't 
isn't being a dimension. <laughs> Odd. Um, why is my dimension tool not working? Anyway, there's the diameter. SketchUp can be kind of funky sometimes, but I like to put uh, a line there so I know that I'm selecting the line. Shoot. Um, anyway, I'm kind of answering your question and trying to show you at the same time, but um, if you did draw all your circles on this wall, just intuitively, you could send the SketchUp model and they, if they have SketchUp, they could just go in here and do what I did, which is go, oh, I wonder how far to start this circle. I can just draw this line here and I know the circle starts seven feet from this wall. And then you can have this whole, um, your whole layout is to scale. So the short answer is, or the long answer is what I just gave you. The short answer is yes. <laughs> So Cheryl's got a follow-up. She's asking, can you show an example of already cast or found objects and how would you document those 200 objects? Um, wait, can I show an example of already made hey, objects? Cheryl, why don't you unmute yourself and, um, and clarify your question? There it is. We're in moderated unmute, unmute mode. I'm not sure what that is. Oh. So, Bill, I think you have to unmute her. I do. Shoot. I don't know how to find everybody. Grid view. I only see you guys. Huh. Now I've, I I don't hear Katie anymore. It says Katie's the host and I and she's muted. Never mind. Cheryl's on an older computer. Oh. She's not able to unmute herself. No worries. She's looking for um, custom objects. Like Cheryl, already, are you think like art, like a sculpture, like you can design your object in SketchUp and then copy it a million times, and then you have that object. Or you can go. Can you still hear me? Yes, we can, Bill. Um, SketchUp has a cool 3D warehouse that you can go to, which I was going to show you in a little, a little while later, but I'll just go now. And um, you can type in nearly anything you want. Um, I don't know, like a bronze sculpture. <laughs> this may not be what you're asking, but. For her, she's saying it's like cast individual objects that she's already made. Oh. So, um, if you have already made those cast objects, you could have them scanned, 3D scanned, but that's a whole different program. Once you get them scanned, you can drop that image into SketchUp. But you can't, I, I don't know how you would do that unless you took the object that you already have and then redrew it in SketchUp. Does that make sense? She says, gotcha, lots of work. Yeah. But what's cool about this 3D warehouse is sometimes there are like a bunch of, it's like you can create a found object sculpture from all these other objects that have already been made. So like if I click this thing and download it, it's gonna download it directly into my model. I know this isn't the question that you had, but this is a moment where I can explain that. So if somebody's already drawn this sculpture and you can find stuff like uh, to scale schematics of like joysticks or something if you're designing a video game. So you don't have to draw everything. If there's some tedious thing that you think might already have been drawn out there by a company, you can go into the 3D warehouse and it's possible you might find it and save yourself a bunch of time. But well, yeah. and as an administrator, Cheryl, I think like if I could see a 3D model that maybe didn't have your exact objects, placed oh. like you wanted them but had a like a placeholder and then I could see photographs of your 200 objects an administrator or a museum curator or whoever you're submitting it to should be able to use those two different types of data the model with something that's just like a scale placeholder like a box or a ball or whatever is sort of reminiscent of your cast object um, and then photographs of your cast object, I think that would be a good way to convey what you're trying to, what you're trying to show. 
Yes, thank you. I, I was like, I should have uh, figured this out, but let's say you know that your bronze star or whatever shape is um, 10 inches. And then if you, if you wanna draw a rectangle with uh, both sides, I just typed in um, 10 feet, actually 10 inches and then a comma and then 15 inches and then hit return and it'll draw your rectangle um, to those two dimensions without having to try to like eyeball it and look up there and try to see, you know, if you're getting close. But let's say your star is this, this shape. I'm gonna group it. Um, I could bring in, uh, let's pretend this is your bronze sculpture. And we know it's that weird size, so I'll just scale it. And then get rid of the, um, get rid of the rectangle, whoops. And then you could um, click it, do this move tool. And if you hold the option key down, it's doing that thing where it's hiding behind the wall. Um, hold the option key down and then make your pattern or whatever on the wall. And this, this would be good enough to show a client or to show an administrator or something like that, what your piece could look like. Um, you can scale it, whatever. This is also a fast way to just sketch your idea. If you're just wondering how it's going to look, you know, just by working in the space like that. Does that help? Yes. She says, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I kind of forgot. I do that all the time. Like if I don't have, if I don't have the time to sit there and draw the entire, let's say it's like a, a stagecoach or something, I'll just put the photo of the stagecoach on a big rectangle. That's the size of the stagecoach. That take this. I know this takes up the space of the stagecoach, and I'll just put the photo of it on one of the one of the sides. So if I'm trying to design a space, I know how far away it is, but I didn't have to design the entire stagecoach just you know for my personal reference, or if I'm trying to convey it to a client. That's Jeff has another question related to this question. He said, "Is there a distribute function?" for the repetition of an object on a wall or floor to automate spacing? Um, it's like there, I don't know. I don't, I've never really used it like that. I've always been really careful and I've never had to, um, to do like hundreds of them like that. I usually just, I will usually just uh, click and then if, like hold the option down and then I can let go of the option and then type in 10 inches and then it's 10 inches away from wherever I, I grabbed it from. You know, whatever. And then um, it's just, I cheat because I never have thousands and I'll just click them all and then, you know, I can either be, it happens so fast that that's kind of how I do it. There's other ways to automate stuff. Like if you have, um, I can't remember actually if there's a way to just do an array where you get you can just instantly get like um, several objects in a circle. There probably is, but I just I always just do it manually. Well, so maybe that's something that I can look into it for next. You time. can look into it for when you're back in two weeks. Yeah, um, we've got about eight minutes left. Are there any other questions or anything else you guys would like to see from Bill? Um, we have eight minutes left in the entire workshop? Yeah. Wow. Um, are there any questions? I can just also run through really quick. I'm not seeing any more coming in. So you want to just show us? Oh, wait. Yes, there is another question. Can you cut a hole in the wall? Yes. And that's uh, if I've selected the wall already, if it's grouped and I draw a circle on it, I can't cut a hole through the wall, but if I triple click and get into that group, it's editable and I can draw a door and use the extrude to push through. And then you've got an open space and you can do that, you know, any shape you want, you can draw, you know, a crazy, use a freehand tool. It's gotta be. How about, a, an, hmm? how about an archway? Can you make an arched doorway? Yes. 
um, say we've already got this doorway, there's a, uh -huh. there's a two point arc tool where I've clicked on one side, click, and then um, I'm, I'm not, not holding any buttons down. I'm just moving my mouse up. You can either do that to scale to a certain number or freehand and push through and then there you go. So I don't know if you saw that, but if it's dark lines like this, then you can't, you know, it's not a closed circuit. And a lot of times, you know, it might be such a tiny distance that you don't notice it. And you're going, why can't I push through this wall? And then you have to zoom way in and find out, oh, I haven't closed the, closed the circuit yet. So then you just close, oops, still didn't close the circuit. Oh, why is it not doing that? Good question, because probably it's not flat on the wall. But you have to go in and make sure that you have thin lines, then for sure you can extrude and all that kind of stuff. And you can ex pull out the other way as well and do weird stuff like that. Cool. Wow, I can't believe so much time already went by. Yeah, a whole hour. So fast. Um, so why don't you share with us a little bit about what we're going to do next time um, in two weeks when Bill is back at the same time in two weeks. So um, I did a workshop on how to use Vectorworks before and how to take your whatever design and put it into Vectorworks, which is an AutoCAD program. And I've always done that. I've always used Vectorworks for whatever reason, because just because that has been a thing that I've done in museums and most museums have Vectorworks. But now more places are getting SketchUp and um, SketchUp has a, a tool called Layout, which is like a, an AutoCAD type program for dimensioning things and having a deliverable or a um, working drawings, CAD drawings, or I mean, uh, working drawings, design drawings, or even construction drawings that look just like you did them in, in uh, Vectorworks that actually comes with the SketchUp bundle. And I just learned how to use that recently. Um, and it's really handy and easy to learn. There's just, with SketchUp, there are these quirks. If you go online and try to learn how to do it, um, they'll tell you stuff, but then, you know, they don't tell you things like, you know, if you get lost in your model and you don't know where your model went and you're looking all over for it, like how to get back to, uh, you know, where you're, where you were working. And so when you import these views into layout, there are, there are these quirks that you, you kind of have to know to be able to import them and, and work on them that way. And then I'm going to try to do a few other more advanced type SketchUp things like uh, Doug said, project uh, an image onto a curved surface. So like if we had, if you had a big cylinder here and you wanted to um, project your artwork all the way around, like wrap it, there's a way to do that. Um, and then also uh, I'll look into some of those other functions like the distribute function and the array function and stuff like that and see if I can, um, if there is that function or not. And if there are any other questions from this workshop that you'd like me to answer for next time, you know, uh, you can email me those questions in advance too. It's bill.dambrova at gmail.com. And I'm happy to answer any of your questions that are something I may have missed here. Great. Anything else from the group? Okay, thank you everybody for being with us today. And we will see you next week when we will have Sarah Conley Odenkirk back with us again to talk about artist copyright. And then Bill will be back um, on the 26th, I believe, um, or 25th, yeah. whichever, Thursday. Okay. It'll be Thursday um, at 10 a.m. to um, go over SketchUp layout. Thanks everybody. Wow. Thank you.